Good morning, First Pentecostal of Chester. I'm glad to be here this morning to just lift up the name of Jesus and give him praise. I'm reminded of Wednesday night prayer. Pastor left us with two words, love and forgive. We need to love more and forgive more. You know, the Bible says that if we don't forgive, God won't forgive us. Let's keep our minds on what the pastor has said. Remember to read Song 91. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we come before you to praise you, to honor you, to give you the glory that belongs to you. We thank you because you're God, and beside you there's none other. You watched over us and you kept us, and we're grateful to you. You watched over us, Lord. Oh, God, we just lift you up this day and thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercy, for all that you're doing for us, oh, God. We're grateful. Hallelujah. Glory be to your name. We pray for our pastor right now. We lift her up to you, O oh God. We ask that you would bless her and keep her and strengthen her and build her up where she's torn down. O oh God, do for her that she can't do for herself. O oh God, give her praise, give her glory, give her honor, Lord, in the name of Jesus. O oh God, we just thank you for her, Lord. We thank you for the word that she brings to us. We just lift them up, O oh God. And we just thank you. We praise you, God, that you're using her. Hallelujah, that she is allowing you, oh God, to speak to her, that we may hear from you. And we're grateful to you for that, Lord God. We pray not only for the pastor, but for all of the deacons and trustees, all of the ministers in the church, oh God. We pray for their families, Lord Jesus. We ask that you reach out and touch them, their children, save them, bring them into the fold. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, we pray for the sick among us. We pray, hallelujah, touch them, Lord God. Move sickness out of their bodies. Put healing in their bodies, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And we'll be grateful to give your name to praise, Lord God, and all the honor belongs to you. We're so thankful. We ask, God, that you look on the bereaved families, those that have lost loved ones. Oh, God, put your arms around them. Give them the strength that they need to go through. God, in the name of Jesus, bless them, keep them, strengthen them. And hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus, have your way, Lord God. We just pray one for another. We ask God that you do for us what we can't do for ourselves. Keep us mindful, hallelujah, that you're always watching. That hallelujah, nothing is hidden from you. You're all seeing and all wise, God. And we thank you and we praise you. Have your way, God. We pray for those that are in the field, working in the hospitals and, and oh God, the prisons and wherever there is sickness, oh God. We pray, God, that you will reach out, Lord. Oh, let your Holy Spirit move right now, God. Hallelujah. Heal, God. Deliver and set free. We ever give your name to praise. The honor and glory belong to you. We thank you right now, God. Bless our children in the church, oh God. Oh God, strengthen them, keep them. Oh, God, build them up, Lord Jesus. Put your arm around them. Draw them closer to you. And put the name of Jesus. God, we just thank you. Have your way today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church, and those of you online live stream. I'm here this morning to read the scripture. And if you'll turn with me to Psalm 145, I will begin at verse 1, and I'll read down to verse 12. I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works to another, and shall declare thy mighty acts. I will speak of the goodness, of the glorious honor of his majesty, and of thy wondrous works. And men shall speak of the might of thy terrible acts, and I will declare thy greatness. They shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness and shall sing of thy righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. 
The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. The word of God is already blessed. We believe in the Father who is God Almighty, the creator of all things and the preserver of light and life. We believe in the Son who is Jesus Christ, God's only begotten Son. He was human and divine, truly lived, suffered and died, rose again from the dead, ascended on high and is coming again. We believe that Jesus was sent by God to reveal God to man that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. We believe in the Holy Ghost who was sent by God the Father and the Son, that the Holy Spirit convicts and converts sinners, dwells in the believer, keeps the believer from the power of sin, and leads them to the Father through his Son, Jesus Christ. We believe the Bible is the Word of God given by inspiration through holy men, that in the Bible, God seeks to reveal his will to man and man seeks to respond to God's revelation. We believe that the union of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are revealed through his church, that all believers are united into one body, the church. We believe that Christ is coming back for his holy church without spot or wrinkle, that without holiness and spirit, soul and body, no man shall see the Lord. And this is what we believe.
Good morning, First Pentecostal. To God be all the glory for the great things he has done. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? If it were not for his mercy and grace toward us, what state would we be in? In spite of the condition of the world today, in spite of the trials and tribulations we may be experienced during this difficult time in our history. God is good. He is still on the throne and we can trust him. This morning, I would like to continue my discussion on the topic of forgiveness. Last Sunday, I spoke on the practice of forgiveness. And on Wednesday evening, I talked about the increase of love in the family and how forgiveness is so important if we are to love one another properly. This morning, I will speak more about this topic in my message entitled, Give the Gift of Forgiveness. Listen attentively and hear what God is saying to us today. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning to say thank you. We thank you, dear God, because you have blessed us to come back together one more time. And as we woke up this morning, we realized it was your grace and your mercy, and we say thank you. We pray, God, as we continue in this word, that you will bless us and help us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the blessed Holy Ghost. Our soul says, Amen. Let's look again at the scripture we read last week when I spoke about the practice of forgiveness. Turn to Matthew 18, 21 to 22. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. I would like to take my text from Mark chapter 11, verse 25. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. Many of us invest a lot of thought, time, and money in the giving of gifts during the month of December. Think about the Christmas season that just passed. If you're like me, you receive special gift catalogs in the mail with all kinds of gift ideas. Television and radio commercials announce sales at the various stores where we shop. Much pressure was applied to encourage us to spend money to purchase gifts for those we love. The Christmas season has come to be a time of gift giving. And as we remember the birth of Christ, 
we are reminded of God's great gift to us. We are also reminded in the nativity story of how the wise men came from the east, bringing expensive and wonderful gifts and presented them as tokens of worship to the Christ child. But we should not be givers only at Christmas time. We should be givers all the time. Jesus taught his disciples on many different occasions to be givers. He said in Matthew 10, 8, Freely you have received, freely give. Luke's gospel encourages us in chapter 6, verse 38. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Jesus also declared in Acts 20, 35, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And an important point I want to make this morning is that some of the greatest gifts we need to give and receive do not require material wealth. And even if you are a billionaire, there are some things that money just can't buy. One of these great gifts is forgiveness. Forgiveness is a gift that everyone needs to both receive and give. All of us need to receive the gift of forgiveness because we all are sinners. We all make mistakes. We all hurt others. We are not perfect beings. We all need God's forgiveness and praise be unto him. He forgives us. Just as we need God's forgiveness, we also need the forgiveness of those whom we've hurt. The list of those we may have hurt includes our loved ones, such as our parents, our children, our companion, and our friends. It also may include others we come into contact with. Those who may be total strangers who just happen to cross our path. Just as we need God's forgiveness and forgiveness from those who we've hurt, we also need to forgive ourselves. This is often get difficult to do. However, when we don't forgive ourselves, we bring unnecessary suffering into our lives. Unwillingness to accept forgiveness from ourselves can produce deep depression that can lead to substance abuse and other destructive behaviors that we use to self-medicate, numb our feelings, and escape the pain. Just as forgiveness is a gift everyone needs to receive from God, others, and our own selves today, I want to focus on the fact that forgiveness is a gift that everyone needs to give. One of the greatest hindrance to spiritual growth is the neglect or refusal to give the gift of forgiveness to those who have injured us. When you refuse to forgive, you stunt your spiritual growth and rob yourself of the joy that God has provided for his forgiven children. Maybe you need to forgive your parents. Some children have been wounded by their parents. Ask God to help you to give the gift of forgiveness to your parents if they have wounded you. Maybe you need to forgive your husband or your wife for some offense or hurt they inflicted on you. Not to do so will cause trouble and damage your marriage. Maybe you need to forgive your children. Parents experience stress, anxiety, and anger at the hands of their children. Children can be cruel and break their parents' hearts. Many parents live with great pain 
because of hurt that comes through their children. Give your child the gift of forgiveness, not because it is deserved, but because it is needed. Your child needs your forgiveness, but you need to be forgiven even more than your child needs your forgiveness. Maybe you need to forgive someone who has injured someone you love. A mother-in-law once attended a prayer service and requested prayer on her own behalf. She said, I have found it impossible to forgive my son-in-law for the hurts he has inflicted upon my daughter and their children. I have lost the joy of my salvation because of my inability to forgive him. Please pray for me. Many times we decide that we will forgive when it is deserved. In this case, maybe the son-in-law did not deserve forgiveness. But that is not the point. Forgiveness is never earned. We must remember that forgiveness is always a gift. Maybe you need to forgive yourself. Some people suffer every day because of careless mistakes or stupid decisions they made in the past. Some people even inflict punishment on themselves repeatedly because of of these past mistakes. When we confess and turn from the love of evil, God forgives us and he wants you to forgive yourself. Forgiveness is a gift that we must give. If you will hold the gift of forgiveness from the one who needs it, you only harm yourself. Let me make it clear that I am not saying you will forget what was done to you. Forgiveness and forgetfulness are not the same thing. It is nearly impossible to totally forget something. But Jesus said we must forgive 70 times, seven times. He meant that every time you hurt because of some injury that has been inflicted on you, you are to forgive again. The word of God makes it clear that we must forgive and we are to experience forgiveness in Matthew 6, 14 to 15. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. This passage of scripture teaches that forgiveness is not a price we pay for the Father's forgiveness, but it is a condition that we must meet in order to receive his forgiveness. You must forgive those who have hurt you to prevent hate from building up in your heart because hate is probably the most costly thing you can allow to take hold of your mind and your heart. It will destroy you. We must forgive if we want to prevent the breakdown of meaningful relationships. This is true, especially in marriage. The husband or wife who never practices forgiveness is in for a miserable marriage. There is no such thing as a marriage with a perfect man to a perfect woman because there is no such thing as a perfect man or a perfect woman. We are all flawed. All of us make mistakes. We all have a selfish streak. This is why people who are married must have a continuous attitude of forgiveness so they don't destroy their relationship. In summary, we must give the gift of forgiveness if we are to enjoy fellowship with God. He is the great forgiver, and by his grace, 
we are part of the community of the forgiven. To enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father, we must be forgiven toward others. Forgiveness is a gift that we can give to others because of God's gracious forgiveness of our sins. God forgives us freely and forever. He does this on the basis that Jesus Christ has died for our sins. Forgiveness is a gift that we need to give because it is required of us. If it were impossible for us to give forgiveness, then it would not be required of us. Forgiveness is a gift that we need to give others because it is absolutely essential for our own peace of mind and joy of heart. Be a giver of forgiveness to others. Give the gift of forgiveness today. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to take time right now, Lord, to say thank you. We thank you for your word. All of us, dear God, we realize now that we all have to have forgiven spirits, that we have to learn how to forgive those that say anything or are wrong to us. Let us have the spirit of forgiveness, and we can even start this week or today that we have to learn how to forgive one another. As you died on the cross, you said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So we're asking you, God, to give us the spirit of forgiveness and to learn how to forgive one another. We say thank you, and we praise and magnify your name. For if you do it, we will be so ever careful to give your name all the praise and the glory and honor because it belongs, dear God, only to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God for this word today entitled, Give the Gift of Forgiveness. Examine yourself this morning. Is there someone you need to forgive? Maybe a parent, a child, a sibling, a friend, maybe you need to forgive yourself from some past mistake or regret. Don't let another day go by with unforgiveness in your heart. If you do so, you are bringing harm to yourself and allowing hate to take root in your heart. Just as Christ forgave you, he expects you to forgive others over and over again. Don't allow stubbornness and pride cause you to walk in disobedience to the Word of God and negatively impact your fellowship with your Heavenly Father. Give the gift of forgiveness today. Until next week, may God continue to bless you abundantly and to God be the glory. As we conclude today's worship service, we encourage you to continue to honor God with the giving of your tithes and offerings. You can give online using PayPal by using the PayPal link on the Give page on our website, fphcchester.org. Our PayPal account is fphcchester.org at verizon.net. As always, you can send your tithes and offerings via United States mail to our church address. First Pentecostal Holy Church, 324 Pusey Street, Chester, PA, 19013. Finally, I invite you to join us for our weekly virtual prayer and Bible study via conference on Zoom on Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock p.m. Be safe, be encouraged until we meet again, and remember, to God be the glory.